every student that you meet here at Columbia all have that sense of like looking at the world pragmatically, trying to figure out how to improve the situation. My Barnard is the Barnard that responds to the times and to the different things that are going on. I'm not moving the needle a lot, that's for sure. But if each of us does a little, then all of a sudden the world's a better place. Without your help in all the communities you serve around the world, this university wouldn't continue to be as outstanding as it is. Francis Sadler. Columbia and Barnard were not the multiracial, multicultural, multinational, multi multi-ethnic kinds of places that it is now. The food was terrible. It was things that we just never ate. That led us to um, creating BOSS, the Barnard Organization of Soul Sisters. The classroom was uncomfortable. We were required to give the black point of view on everything, or like we spoke for all black people, that, or we were ignored entirely. Chris Royer was, was a, an English professor at that time. We had to give an American author of our choice. And I was belligerent and a pretty much an angry black woman at the time. And so I picked Richard Wright, expecting her to say no. And she said, well, certainly. That changed the course of, of, of how I thought about school, how I thought about my life. I valued my education, but I wasn't happy here. Um, and, and, and so when I left, I left. A student in, um, in the class of 2003 had decided to do her senior thesis on the history of black women at Barnard. And Roz Rosenberg was her advisor. And Roz said, it's, they're not all dead. You should go find someone and do it as oral history. And we talked and we talked and we talked. And then she said, well, Miss Sadler, I'm fascinated, but I can't do my whole paper about you. So I started making phone calls. And so we decided that we would come back together and the Alumni of Color Dinner started there. It got bigger and bigger. In 2002 was the first one. So this is 15 years, was this year, was 15 years. My Columbia commitment is to spread the word to as many alums as will listen in as many settings as will listen, that they need to be back engaged in the community and that there is a role for every person to play. Congratulations. Getting an award is an example for others that you, you should dream big, you should dream about it, you could, it could happen to you. Michael Kornfeld. For me, my experience, albeit short here at Columbia, was pivotal in my life. And so I always had a warm spot towards Columbia as my career progressed. It was here that I wrote a thesis the topic was Libyan oil policy, which allowed me to um, get my degree and then start a career in investments where I was looking at the changing political climates and how they affect corporations and their stock prices. I was working two part-time jobs, which totaled 40 hours a week. You know, times were tough and um, I didn't want to ask for funds, so I funded this myself and consequently, um, realized how difficult it is for today's student. After joining the Columbia Club of Washington, there would be um, events that would be academic in nature. One thing led to another, and I, all of a sudden I became very active in the, uh, the graduate school and, uh, and also the Alumni Association, culminating in my uh, being the chair of the Alumni Leaders Weekend. One of the things that's come up now that I've been on the board of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences for the last decade or so is what can you do with a PhD if, other than teach? I'm one of the living proof that something can happen. I think I made the right career choice. I think my clients think I made the right career choice. And I know my family thinks I made the right career choice. I, I get a big thrill of being on the campus and uh, uh, being part of a larger institution that is already excellent and trying to keep it excellent. I am pleased to recognize the 2017 Alumni Medal recipients for their extraordinary dedication to Columbia. 
I shy away from publicity. I don't feel really comfortable around cameras, and occasionally I'll stick my head out of the sand and want some attention. And that day it was showered upon me by uh, the university, and I'm forever grateful. Peter Marber, School of International and Public Affairs. The great skill that you develop here at SEPA is this ability to understand how the world is reconfiguring and believe that it can reconfigure. And the fact is that that's basically what emerging markets are all about. The mission of this school is really in this belief that um, public policy can shape the world positively. You could hear dozens of languages being spoken walking down the halls. I found myself shuttling between the law school, the business school, the graduate school of arts and science, and a couple of classes here at SEPA, really drawing on all the best that the university had to offer. Coming from a family that has a wife and two kids who got degrees from three different schools than I did, I truly do feel part of the Columbia family. I had built this career on Wall Street um, in emerging markets, which was a very kind of new space uh, in the late 80s. And so I began to teach a class in emerging markets in SEPA back in 1993. And I still get excited uh, talking to, the, to these students. I've hired dozens of SEPA interns and hired many of them full time. So many students when they leave SEPA actually go out into the world and go back to their 80 or 90 countries where they came from. So it's not an easy network to keep in touch with. We started the SEPA Financial Career Boot Camp in an effort to sort of not only galvanize alumni to come back to campus uh, to help students, but also to begin to plant seeds in the students themselves on what it is to be a good alum here at Columbia. My book, Brave New Math, really epitomizes everything that I learned at Columbia. It really promoted using new lenses for understanding problems in the world. It makes me so proud to see the Columbia campaign actually doing exactly that.